Next Chapter Podcasts. Hey, Play On Podcast listeners. I want you to be a part of the cast. Become a supporting cast member with Play On Podcasts for just $5 a month. Get in-depth interviews featuring some of the most brilliant artists working today. I talk to actors, playwrights, directors, and producers from the worlds of theater and Hollywood, pulling back the curtain on why they got into their profession, why these stories are so relevant today, and providing context on the process of making these plays in the podcast format. You'll enjoy ad-free episodes of the Play On podcast series, and maybe even a gift or two. Head over to playonpodcasts.com Click Supporting Cast and join the club today. We so love creating this content for you, and we hope you'll support us so we can bring you inside this rejuvenated, reimagined Shakespearean world. Join the cast. Supporting Cast. Go to ncpodcasts.com. Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast series, Henry V. Episode 6, Not a Boy Left Alive. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. Be kind and eke out our performance with your mind. My lord, most humbly on my knee I beg the honor of leading our vanguard. Take it, brave York. Now, soldiers, march away, and how thou pleasest, God, enact this day. Yield, cur! Je pense que vous êtes gentil homme de bonne qualité. What quality do you curse at me? Art thou a gentleman? What is thy name? Discuss. Oh, Seigneur Dieu! Oh, Seigneur Dieu. Sounds like a gentlemanly name. My name is Pistol Called. Consider my words, oh, Seigneur Dieu. Take heed. Oh, Signor Du, you will die by my sword unless you pay me egregious ransom. Unfurl your pockets. Oh, prenez miséricorde. Ayez pitié de moi. Uh, je ne cache rien. Cash, yes, and lots of it I'll need, or I'll rip thy gut from thy throat in drops of crimson blood. Come hither, boy. Ask this slave in French what his name is. Écoutez, comment êtes-vous appelé? <coughs> Mon- Monsieur Le Fer. He says his name is Mr. Fair. Mr. Fair! I'll fair him, and ferk him, and fair at him. Discuss the same in French under him. I do not know the French for fair, and ferret, and ferk. Bid him prepare, for I will cut his throat. Uh, uh, Qu'a dit-il, monsieur? Il me commande à vous dire d'être prête, car ce soldat ici est tout disposé à cette heure de vous um, couper la gorge. Oh. Exactly! Coupe la gorge! Permafoy, peasant! Unless you give me money, lots of money, or mangled shalt thou be by this my sword. Oh, je vous supplie, pour la mort de Dieu, me pardonnez, je suis gentil homme de bonne maison. Gardez ma vie et je vous donnerai deux cent écoups. What are his words? He prays you to save his life. He is a gentleman of a good house, and for his ransom, he will give you 200 crowns. Tell him my fury is abated. I I will take the crowns. (sighs) Petit monsieur, qu'a dit-il? Pour les écoutes que vous l'avez promis, il est content à vous donner la liberté, la franchissement. Mm -hmm. Oh, sur mes genoux, je vous donne mille remerciements. Et je m'estime heureux que je suis tombé entre les mains d'un chevalier. Je pense le plus brave, violent et très distingué seigneur d'Angleterre. <laughs> Expound unto me, boy. 
Uh, he gives you upon his knees a thousand thanks, and he delights at his good fortune to fall into the hands of one so brave and valorous as you, most worthy gentleman of England. <laughs> as I bleed him dry, I will show him some mercy. Follow me! Suivez-vous, le grand capitaine. I never knew so full a voice could issue from such a hollow heart. But the saying is true. An empty vessel makes the loudest sound. I must return now to the servants. We guard the luggage of our camp. If the French only knew, they could take all our provisions with ease, for there is no one to guard it all but boys. Diable! Oh, Seigneur, le jour a perdu, tout est perdu. Mort de ma vie, all is confounded, lost. Reproach and everlasting shame upon us. Oh, malicious fate, do not run away. Why, all our ranks are broken. Oh, perdurable shame. Let's stab ourselves. Are these the same wretches that we mocked at? Is this the king we sent you for ransom? Shame and eternal shame. Nothing but shame. Let us die in honor. Once more, back again. Let us exploit the chaos that broke us. En masse, we shall now offer up our lives. We have enough still alive in the field to smother up the English with our numbers if only we could make some order of it. The devil take order now. Out to the throng. My life be short, else my shame be too long. We have done well, my valiant countrymen, but all's not done. The French still keep the field. The Duke of York salutes your majesty. He lives, good uncle? Thrice within this hour I saw him fall. Thrice up again and fighting from helmet to the spur covered in blood. In that blood he's now lain, the brave soldier. Covering the field with his honored wounds. Arm in arm beside him in grave friendship, the noble Earl of Suffolk also lies. Suffolk died first, and York did come to him, flesh torn and steeped in gruesome injuries. He took him by the beard, kissed the gashes carved across his bloody face, and cried out, Wait, dear cousin Suffolk, wait for my soul. It yearns to accompany your sweet soul on its flight to heaven. Hand in hand now, just as we stood here in our chivalry upon this glorious and well-fought field. Upon these words I come to comfort him. He smiles. Raises his hand to touch my face and with a feeble grip says, Dear my lord, commend my service to my sovereign. Then he turned and threw his wounded arm over Suffolk's neck and he kissed his lips. And in that seal of blood he surrendered to death, testified to love and died noble. As a soldier, tis uncommon to weep, but as a soldier, such beautiful death left me no choice but to give over tears. I blame you not, for I too must struggle with mistful eyes upon hearing of it. But hark, I hear them sound a call to arms. The French cry to rally their scattered men. We now must kill every prisoner we keep. Send word through the ranks. They've killed the boys and taken the luggage. Tis an express violation against the laws of war, mark you now. Tis as vile an act of knavery as can exist in your consciousness, is it not? Tis true. There's not a boy left alive. And it was those cowardly rascals who ran from the battle that committed this slaughter. They've also burned or taken every last thing from the king's tent. Such is why the king most deservedly did order that every soldier cut his prisoners' throats, he did. Oh, tis a gallant king. Aye, he was born at Monmouth, Captain Gower. What's the name of the town where Alexander the Pig was born? Alexander the Great? Why, I pray you, is not Pig great? The Pig, or the Great, or the Mighty, or the Huge, or the Magnanimous? They all mean the same, but for slight variations. I think Alexander the Great was born in Macedon. His father was called Philip of Macedon, if I recall. 
I think it is in Macedon where Alexander is born. I tell you, Captain, if you look at the maps of the world, I warrant you shall find in the comparisons between Macedon and Monmouth that the situations, look at you, is both alike. There's a river in Macedon and there is also a river at Monmouth. It is called Y at Monmouth. I cannot recall what is the name of the other river, but no matter. Tis all the same, tis alike as my fingers are to my fingers, and salmon swim in both. If you contemplate well the life of Alexander, our Harry of Monmouth's life compares rather nicely, for it is possible for one to compare any one thing to any other thing, so God knows you know how Alexander, yes, in his rages and his furies and his wrath and his anger and his moods and his displeasures and his indignations and also being a little intoxicated in his brains, look you, did in his ale and his anger kill his best friend Cletus. But our king is not like him in that. He never killed any of his friends. It is not very nice, Mark, you now, to extrapolate my meaning of a story before it is finished. I speak only in figurative comparison of the characters. As Alexander killed his friend Cletus, being all drunk in his ales and his cups, so too did Harry Monmouth, being in his right wits and good judgment, turn away from his friend, the fat knight with the giant pig belly, you know, the... Man, he was full of jests and jibes and knaveries and mocks. I, I forgot his name. Sir John Falstaff. That is he. I'll tell you, they are good men born at Monmouth. Here comes his majesty. <clears throat> I was not angry since I came to France until this instant. Take a trumpet, Herald, ride out toward the horsemen upon the hill. If they dare to fight us, bid them come now or clear the field, for the very sight of them is offensive. If they'll do neither, then we will come to them and force them away, swift as a stone from the sling of David. We'll show no mercy. Go and tell them so. Here comes the Herald of the French, my liege. His eyes are humbler than they used to be. How now? What means this, Herald? Don't you know that all I have to ransom are these bones? You come again for ransom? No, great king. I come to thee for charitable license, that we may wander o'er this bloody field to find our dead, and then to bury them. To sort our nobles from our common men. For many of our princes, woe the while, lie drowned and soaked in mercenary blood. So do our peasant soldiers drench their limbs in blood of princes. Their wounded horses step ankle-deep in gore, and with wild rage stomp their heels and trod upon their masters, dead, dead, dying. Oh, give us leave, great king, to view the field in safety and dispose of their dead bodies. I tell thee truly, Herald, I know not if the day be ours or no, for a many of your horsemen still watch and gallop o'er the field. The day is yours. <sighs> Praised be God and not our strength for it. <sighs> what is this castle called that stands hereby? They call it Agincourt. To call we this the field of Agincourt fought on the day of Crispin Crispianus. Your grandfather of famous memory, if it please your majesty, and your great uncle Edward the Black Prince of Wales, as I have read in the Chronicles, fought a most brave battle here in France. <laughs> they, they did, Flewellen. Your majesty says very true. If your majesty is remembered of it, the Welshmen fought very valiantly in a garden where leeks did grow, and wore those leeks in their Monmouth caps, which your majesty knows to this day is a great tribute to them their honorable service, and I do believe your majesty is sometimes known to wear a leak upon St. Davy's Day. <laughs> I do wear it, and with memorable pride, for I am Welsh, you know, good countryman. All the water in Y cannot wash your majesty's Welsh blood out of your body. I can tell you that. God <laughs> bless it and preserve it as long as it pleases his grace and his majesty, too. Oh, thanks, my good countryman. 
by Jeshu. I am your majesty's countryman. I care not who know it. I will confess it to all the world. <laughs> I need not be ashamed of your majesty, praised be God, so long as your majesty is an honest man. <laughs> God keep me so. Our heralds go with him. Send report to me on the numbers dead from both our sides. And call that fellow here. Soldier, you must come to the king. Soldier, why do you wear that glove in your cap? If it please your majesty, tis a signal to someone I should fight with if he be alive. An Englishman? If it please your majesty, he was a rascal who argued with me last night. If he lives and ever dares to claim this glove, I have sworn to give him a box of the ear. Or if I see my glove in his cap, which he swore on his soldier's honor he would wear, I will slap it soundly off his hat. What well, think you, Captain Flewellen? Should this soldier keep his oath? He's a coward and a villain otherwise, and it please your majesty, in my estimation. Mm, it may be possible his enemy is a gentleman of high station, quite above his rank. Even if he were as good a gentleman as the devil is, like Lucifer and Beelzebub himself, look your grace, tis necessary that he keep his vow and his oath. If he dishonor his word, see you now, his reputation is that of a villain and a jack sauce, as ever his black shoe trod upon God's earth, in my opinion. Then keep your vow, boy, when you meet the man. So I will, my liege, on my life. Under who do you serve? Under Captain Gower, my liege. Gower's a good captain, has good knowledge, and is well literatured in the wars. Call him here to me, soldier. I will, my liege. Here, Flewellen, take this glove for me and wear it in your cap. When the French Duke of Alençon and I fought in the field, I took this glove from his helmet. If any man should challenge you because of it, we know he's a friend to Alençon and an enemy to us. If you encounter any such man, arrest him and you do me love. Your grace does me as great an honor as can be desired in the hearts of his subjects. I yearn to see such a man on two legs who shall find himself aggrieved at this glove, that's all. But oh, I yearn to see it once. Please, God of grace, I hope that I might see. Knowest thou, Captain Gower? He's my dear friend, if please you. Pray thee, go find him and bring him to my tent. I will fetch him. My lord of Warwick and my brother Gloucester, follow Flewellen closely at his heels. The glove which I have given him to wear may soon bring him a box of the ear. It belongs to that soldier there, Williams. By our agreement, I should wear it myself. If that soldier should strike him, and I think by his hard demeanor he will keep his word, some sudden mischief may arise of it. Follow and see there be no harm between them. Now come with me, Uncle of Exeter. I suspect you shall be knighted, Captain Gower. By God's will, Captain Gower, I pray you please come quickly to the king. How now? There's more good fortune that awaits you than you could ever imagine. Sir, know you this glove? Know the glove? I know the glove is a glove. I know this, and thus I challenge it. Splut! And monstrous traitor as any's in the universal world! Or in France! Or in England! How now, sir, you villain? Did you think I'd break my promise? Stand away, Captain Gower. I will punish this treason with violence, I promise you. I am no traitor. That's a lie in thy throat. I charge you in his majesty's name, arrest him. He's a friend of the Duke of Allenson's. How now? What's the matter? My liege, here's a villain and a traitor that, look, your grace, has struck with the glove your majesty took from the helmet of Allenson. My liege, this was my glove. See? Here, I have the pair. The man I gave it to promised to wear it in his cap, and I promised to strike him if he did. I met this man with my glove in his cap, and I have been as good as my word. 
If your majesty may permit, please to hear now what an errant, rascally, beggarly, lousy knave this man is. I hope your majesty will hear my testimony and my witness and my promise that this is the glove of Alanson that your majesty gave to me, which you will remember. Give me your glove, soldier. Look, here's the fellow of it. It was indeed I that you promised to strike, and you spoke to me in bitterest words. If it please your majesty, let his neck answer for it if there's any martial law in the world. How can you provide satisfaction? Any true offense, my lord, comes from the heart, and my heart never intended to offend your majesty. You did abuse your king. Your majesty came not like a king. You appeared to me but as a common man. Consider the darkness, your cloak, your rough appearance. Whatever your highness suffered in those clothes, I beg you, take it as your own fault and not mine. For had you been the kind of man you seemed, you would have taken no offense. Therefore, I beg your highness, pardon me. Uncle Exeter, fill this glove with gold and give it to this fellow. Keep it, fellow, and wear it in your cap with honor until I challenge it. Give him the coins, and Captain, you must now be friends with him. By this day and this light, the fellow's brave enough in his insides. Here, there's twelve pence for you. And I pray you to serve God and keep away from prawls and prabbles and quarrels and dissensions, and I promise it'll be better for you. I'll take none of your money. It's given with good will. I can tell you it's enough to fix your shoes. Come, why should you be bashful? Your shoes are not good, but the money is, I promise. Or else I'll exchange it. Now, Harold, have the dead been counted? Here is the number of the slaughtered French. What prisoners of rank are taken, uncle? Charles, Duke of Orleans, nephew to the king. John, Duke of Bourbon, and Lord Boussaquault. Of other lords, barons, knights, and squires, full 1,500 besides common men. This note tells me of 10,000 Frenchmen who in the field lie slain. Of princes in this number and nobles bearing banners, there lie dead 126. Added to these of knights, esquires, and gallant gentlemen, 8,400, of the which 500 were but yesterday dubbed knights. And so in these 10,000 they have lost, there are but 1,600 mercenaries. The rest are princes, barons, lords, knights, Squires and gentlemen of rank and nobility. The names of those their nobles that lie dead. Charles Delabreth, High Constable of France. Jacques of Chatillon, Admiral of France. The Master of the Crossbows, Lord Rambure. Great Master of France, the brave Sir Guichard Dauphin. John, Duke of Alençon. Anthony, Duke of Brabant, the brother of the Duke of Burgundy. Mm. Oh, here was a royal fellowship of death. Where is the number of our English dead? Edward, the Duke of York. The Earl of Suffolk. Sir Richard Ketley. Davy Gam, Esquire. None else of rank and of all other men but twenty-five? Oh, God, thy arm was here. This victory does not belong to us. We must ascribe it to thy arm alone. Has it ever been absent strategy and in the straightforward play of battle to have so great and little loss from one side to the other? Take this victory, God, for tis no one's but thine. Tis wonderful. Let us go in procession to the village, and let it be known that he who boasts of this will be put to death. None in our ranks shall take the praise from God, for tis his only. If it please your majesty, is it lawful to tell how many are killed? 
Yes, Captain. But with this acknowledgement that God fought for us. Yeah, my conscience, he did us great good. Perform all holy rites. And then to Calais and to England then, where never from France arrived more happy men. The Play On podcast series, Henry V, was translated into modern English verse by Lloyd Suh and directed by Krista Williams. The cast is as follows. Stephen Boyer as Pistol and McMorris. Andy Lucian as Bardolph, Westmoreland, Bedford, and Bourbon. Colleen Worthman as Exeter and Orléans. Jeff Beale as Constable, Court, and Gray. Brittany Catherine Allen as Gower, Elise, Burgundy, French soldier, and Ely. Socorro Santiago as hostess, Queen Isabel, governor, Erpingham, and York. Paco Tolson as Dauphin, Nim, Jamie, and Scroop. Lloyd Sell as Chorus and Williams. Bobby Moreno as King Henry V. Brad Bellamy as Fluellen and Canterbury. Nikki Masood as Catherine, Boy, First Ambassador, Messenger, and Montjoy. Jordan Barbour as King of France, Cambridge, Bates, and Salisbury. Casting by the Telsey Office, Karen Castle, CSA, and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Julie Foe. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Original music composition, sound design, and mix by Shane Reddick. Sound engineering by Sadaharu Yagi. Mix engineer and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh and Robert McNabb. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Coordinating producer, Transcend Streaming, Kira Bowie and Liana Keys. Script supervisor, Jordan Moore. Managing producer, Robert Capadona. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play On podcast series, Henry V, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Hear more about the Play On Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. Next Chapter Podcasts.